With archery season coming to a close, many are going to be hanging up their bows for the winter. And while many hunters prefer using the modern compound bows, if you really want to get primitive, well, you're going to have to go old school. I already pre-cut this piece of hickory to 72 inches, so I'm going to mark the halfway point. From this piece of hickory, David Long of Horntown, Virginia will craft a bow fast and accurate for target contests and worthy of taking down a whitetail. Whatever your archery needs, David can build the bow for you. I've learned as many different ways to make bows as I could over the years, and I've settled into a method that I like. Draw the lines from to uh, get the bow its shape. I have made bows for uh, reenactors, um, hunters, target shooters. I've made the standard flat bow that, that uh, was common on continental Europe for ever and ever. I like to build the English longbow. Sometimes somebody will want something different. That's to indicate where the tips of the bow will be. David has to mark all the important spots along the piece of hickory for the bow to function and also draw the lines to give the bow its shape. This is not always the same depending on who the bow is for. The dimensions will be slightly different or depending on the draw weight, draw length of the bow. For David, this process has become second nature, possibly bordering on obsession. It's something he has been doing for nearly all of his life. My great-grandpa was a Lakota Indian and uh, he showed me how to do this when I was maybe three or four years old. He took me outside and he uh, showed me how to make a Lakota sapling bow. I talk about it all the time. My family gets sick of it. They're like, yeah, can, can you please shut up about it? <laughs> and, uh, you know, can't help it. It's, uh, it's addictive, archery is. Bowyer, Stringfellow, and Fletcher, David Long does it all when it comes to archery. <laughs> Building a bow is not an overnight process, and we're not able to see it the whole way through, but we saw enough. Enough to realize that David puts everything into each bow he makes. When you're building a bow or shooting a bow, you feel connected to everybody all over the world who does the same thing. And when I'm doing this, I'm more me than any other time. There's uh, something deeply spiritual about shooting the old bows and about making them. It's, it's like a, for lack of better terms, it's my, my connection to God. At one time, David made his bows by hand, crafting and shaping the bow with a knife. But now, with table saws and sanders, the process is a little faster, but with no less TLC. I think things are so complicated in this life now that people want to experience something simpler, something old. Uh, there's a longing for tradition, and that's why folks will purchase or shoot a wooden bow. They're more graceful, in my opinion. There are different shapes. Just about every culture in the world has used the bow and arrow at some point, and uh, it's, it's a common thread that's been running, you know, through human culture for over 10,000 years, I believe. Primitive the process may be, David is not quite a citizen of the Middle Ages. He does have a cell phone and even a Facebook page and he does take orders for custom bows. People want to take a step backwards. And I think also when you're shooting a traditional or primitive bow, you kind of find yourself. It takes the, the focus off of all of this around you. And, and it, it kind of turns the mind inward. Bowyer, Stringfellow, and Fletcher, David Long does it all when it comes to archery. And if building a bow blocks all distractions and puts him at peace, then David has definitely hit the bullseye.